Welcome you to our service today. We're so glad that you have joined us. We appreciate you, even though we don't see you with our natural eyes. We know that you are there. We hear from you. We thank you so much for uh, all of you who share uh, the broadcast, those of you who uh, like it. Thank you so much for doing those things. We want to get the Word of God out, and so that's why we preach the gospel. We travel around the world, well, during non-pandemic times, and we are preaching the gospel over the airwaves everywhere. We want to say specifically that we appreciate those of you who are in Asia, Africa, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and even the islands of the sea. We so appreciate all of you. And we, are, we want to know, we want you to, to know rather, that we are all God's people. And so today we bless you in the name of Jehovah God. We bless you in the name of Yahweh. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our soon coming King. Amen. So we thank you. And, and here in the sanctuary, we will, we will stand and we will give praise and worship to the Lord. And wherever you are there, you do the same. Because the Lord God is good. He is good all the time. He is good in every situation. Even in the negative things, He works together for our good. So we want you to be encouraged today through the praise and the worship and through the Word of God. God bless you. All right, come on, everybody. Let's give Him a shout of praise where you're at. Can you lift your voice loud? We just say, Lord, we bless you this morning, Father God. We bless you this morning, God. How do I know? Because he's been. (laughs) Because we know, Pastor, that the Lord has blessed us. Amen. We know, Pastor, the Lord has blessed us. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Here we go. Ha.
Somebody give him one more shout in this house. Come on. Hallelujah. We're never going to stop loving you, Lord. We're never going to stop giving you praise, Father God, Lord. We're going to love you with everything that we have, Father God. Hallelujah. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. For my God will never fail. Come on, let me hear you. Yeah, my God will never fail. For I'm going to see you. That's right. 
a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the Worship him with a song in your heart. Just lift it up. Just lift your voice across the room. And just give him worship and adoration this morning. And declare, Lord, in you, I'm going to see a victory. In you, I'm going to see victory. In Jesus' name, no matter what it is, he has the victory. Come on, give him praise.
Father, you are just so good. You are just so good to your people. And Father, you are worthy of all the praise. Father, we just, we just lift up the name of Jesus right now, Father. Thank you, Father, that you have given your very best when you gave us your son, Lord, that, that uh, he is the source of everything we need. Not only is he, he the source, but he also is the provider. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. You deserve all praise. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Father, now these requests, first of all, Lord God, anybody in this house that has a need of any kind, and we know there's many represented here, Father, online, Father, I'm asking that in the name of Jesus, Father, you meet each one of us where we are, Lord God, and let us know and confirm in our hearts and in our minds that you are for us and not against us, and that whatever it is, Lord, whatever it is, you will bring us through, because you're just that good, God. Thank you. Thank you. Father, now these requests here, Lord God. We pray for Officer PC. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Father, thank you that you had people in the right place at the right time. Father, you're, you're always on time. You're always on time, Father. And Lord God, you had people in the right place at the right time, Father, to see to it that, that, that he is uh, well and whole and back home now, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you that this procedure, that, uh, through this heart attack and everything that took place, Father, that you restore him completely to health. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you're, you're watching over us. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Lord, we pray for Debbie and healing of her throat, Lord. Father, Johnny, back surgery, Lord. Neva, wrist surgery. My mom, Pat, who's fixing to go through a surgery, Lord. Father, I pray for each one of these individuals, Lord, that you cause everything to go well. Lord, that the doctors and the medical staff, that, that, uh, that they will do exceedingly abundantly above their own knowledge, above their own training and the experience, Father, because your hand is upon them. So thank you, Father, for bringing these through, Lord God. Father, thank you. Lord, we pray for Luis and Charles, Terry, Janine, Lord, and anybody else who is dealing with cancer. Father, we just uh, speak to cancer and we say, cease and desist your attack upon the people of God. You can advance no further. You must retreat in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for the outcome. We thank you, Lord God, for working on Louise's, Charles, Terry's, and Janine's behalf. Father, and Susan, Lord God, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray for Janelle, Lord God, uh, uh, and that dog bite father the stitches that she got lord god cause healing to come the soreness and the pain to to uh, to cease in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord father we pray for pastor lubell lord at the loss of his granddaughter here a few weeks ago and now the loss of his daughter father let your peace which passes all understanding let let the god of all comfort manifest upon pastor lubell and the entire family lord thank you Thank you. Only you can comfort, Father, in times like this. Only you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your help to the Lubell family. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we pray for Edna dealing with pneumonia. Father, thank you. Thank you for touching her and healing her pneumonia. Father, cause her lungs to be clear of any fluid. Father, just cause her to be able to breathe without uh, any uh, complications at all, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you for touching her right where she's at in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for Michael. Father, evidently he's not sleeping well. Lord, now you're asking for a, a, a complete rest. Lord, well, you have provided a rest for the people of God in your son jesus christ lord god so thank you thank you father for bringing rest upon michael in jesus name and thank you lord and father we pray for stephen right now lord god we pray for stephen father on his 19th birthday lord god that this young man father would continue to follow after you all the days of his life father that he will complete the course that you have for him lord god Father, that, that, that Stephen won't look to the right or he won't look to the left, but Lord God, he will look only to you in everything that he does. Father, thank you for blessing Stephen today, Lord God. 
on his 19th birthday. Father, we pray for his mom and dad as Stephen's away at school. We know he's here with us today, but as he's, as he's away at school. So thank you, Lord. Bless this family in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A body for the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He, the word, was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, the word. And without him, the word, nothing was made that was made. In him, the word was life. And the life, the word, was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend, overcome it. In these five verses, the hand of God is seen in an undeniable way, working out his will through his word. His word is Jesus Christ, who procured an irreversible and eternal salvation for us. He has done a permanent work for us who believe. The Word of God is our Savior, who gives us a wider context of salvation. We now know that having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever, that our safety, security, and salvation rest in one place and upon one person, Jesus Christ. And since our salvation rests upon the shoulder of Jesus, it is as eternal as he. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There has never been a more beautiful word than that God our Father gave us his word in a human body. It was the word of God on the cross purchasing our salvation. It was Jesus, the Son of God, who died in our place. It was our debt that he paid and our death that he died. The word of God is our Savior. Since the word of God was, is our only savior, salvation, why do we not depend on him more? Why do we not lean on the written word and the living word in every situation? Why do we have to reach a critical mass and desperation before we lean and depend on him? Let us remember that it is he who loves us and has saved us. Let us therefore keep our focus on Jesus, always looking to him, the one through whom all things, the one who has all power and authority, and the one who has given his life for us and to us. Pastor Don. You know, I don't know how often you think about the goodness of God and what he's done for us, but I do often. And sometimes it's just overwhelming how good God is to us and for us. Right? Come on, y'all. He's good. He's good. 
I'm Kenneth Mutchler. I'm one of the pastors here at the fellowship, and I'm here to greet our first-time guests. Is there anybody here for the very first time? Would you please raise your hand? Our ushers are right over here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Our ushers have a, a card if you just fill it out. We've also got a gift for you. And with the card, just put it back in the offering at offering time. That'll be great. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. Everybody? How about online? Anybody? Is this your first time joining in? Please, if it is, just in the comment, just let us know that it's your first time. Somebody's going to respond to you, okay? Just uh, If you do that, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us online. Everybody, let's just stand up, wave at our guests, and wave at each other. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Silent voices. <laughs> Everybody doing all right today? How was your Thanksgiving? Right? It was good, right? Yes, yes, it was good. So good. I hope everybody was blessed on their Thanksgiving day and their time off. Um, it is uh, now offering. It's offering, right? We get to give back. We get to show our love uh, towards the Lord in, in, in the manner of our giving, our, right? Right? You know, he gave his very best when he gave his son. He didn't hold nothing back. I shared that with y'all last week. You know, he's just so good. In like manner, let us be those who give. Let us be givers. Let us be like our father. So that in so doing, we can advance the kingdom of God. Even in these difficult times of, of not being able to travel uh, and, and do missions work as normal. But be assured that missions is going forth. Doing, am I right, Pastor Lavelle? We are continuing to give and support ministries throughout the world. So, so in that, uh, if you need an offering, please raise your hand and our ushers will see to it that you get one. We have the three ways to give. You can give here in the house by cash, check, or envelope. You can go to cccfellowship.com forward slash give and, and, and give in that fashion. Or you can text it in at 361-386-386. 2565 and type in keywords for your giving options there. Everybody all right? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much once again for your love. Thank you for your mercy, your grace. Father, you so lavishly poured upon us. And Father, thank you for blessing your people. Bless this offering in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you Pastor Ken. Thank you so much. I would like to say uh, it is just wonderful to be here with all of you today. I trust that you feel the same way. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, we, we know that you had a, a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, because uh, the Lord gave us Thanksgiving and he's put Thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. I wanted to just uh, say a couple of words or so about uh, our, our sister Ruth here. Uh, she's going to uh, sing. Uh, she came back to the church about two years ago, I'm guessing, about two years ago. And uh, Ru Ruth, some of you may not know about it, she's sort of quiet. She doesn't make a big fuss about anything. But at one time, she was uh, a, a part of our praise team. She was actually a praise and worship leader, uh, and she and Tracy at the time. And so for a number of years, so she came back. They moved back in this area, and she came back to the church. And it was just a blessing to see her. But what is uh, even a greater blessing is the fact that, that uh, she doesn't make a big fuss about anything. And uh, we talked about, maybe when she first came, I talked about her, hey, why don't you sing some something for us? Because I remember her story when she was a young girl, a uh, little child growing up uh, in the city adjacent to us, Robstown. Uh, uh, I mean, town next to us, Robstown. And uh, she, would, she wanted to sing for the Lord. She really wanted to sing desperately for the Lord, and, but she could not sing. She would get into a tree, she'd climb this tree. So obviously she was a little bit of a tomboy. She would climb the tree and, get a, and sing and just sing and sing and sing. And finally one day the Lord gave her a, a voice to sing melodies to him. And this is a little bit about our sister Ruth. Ruth Cristiano. Thank you. The Word of God says that no good thing will He withhold from us to those who walk uprightly. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you. You may be down and feel like 
God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. Right now it seems that there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again He'll take care of you and He'll do it again. He'll do it again. If you'll just take a look at where you so much, Sister Ruth Christiana. Wow, thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. So God has brought her a long way from that tree. 
Thank you again, again. Uh, also, before I start the, the message here, let me just say two or three things. Uh, one is, thank you for coming. <laughs> you know, it would be terrible preaching uh, to an empty house, but I would do it if I had to. Um, also, um, uh, Pastor uh, Ken was praying for one of our, our TFI members in the Philippines uh, when he said, Pastor Lubel, Pastor Kitoriano is his name, Lubel Kitoriano. They've had a lot of of just difficulty in the family. His uh, granddaughter died a few weeks ago, and then his daughter died uh, just a few, a few days ago. And we just want to keep the the, uh, the Kitoriano family, Lubel Kitoriano. He's a really, really dear brother. He is, have you, have you ever heard of Jack Van Empey? Jack Van Empey. They call him uh, the living, the walking Bible, I think they call him, the walking Bible. Man can spit out more scriptures than a Gatlin gun bullets. And, um, and so, but Key Toriano, pa Pastor Lubell is the same way. I love being with him when we're in the Philippines. He's got a scripture there to give you, and just quoting them like that. So just amazing, amazing. I, um, I just want to say those things. Also, another thing, would like to say that after the service, I, I'm going to try to get done quickly. And so if I should do that, I would like for you to stay just for about five minutes. And we're going to talk about something um, once we, uh, the camera is off of us. So is that, is that okay? Um, also, it's good to see you, uh, Brother Luis, uh, here today. Uh, been praying for you around the clock, man. Around the clock. And just believing God for you. And, and it was good to see old Stephen back. I call him the prodigy, the prodigy, yeah, good to see you, see Stephen back, bless you, and the whole family, everybody, 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 so let's uh, jump into the Word of God, if that's, if that's proper, uh, we'll get right into the Word of God, oh, the roots, we can't forget the roots, thank you for coming back from vacation, We have university students here, my wife said. I can't see all these masks. Well, oh, I see Brian. How are you? I see Brian. Who, who else do we see from the university C coming in? Brian. Okay, my wife wanted to make sure it was you. She just saw you <laughs> come all the way from Baylor. Yeah, go, so good to see you. Yeah, go, good to see you. Uh, yeah, bless you. Yes, from the city, from the city of the... Texas Ranger, it's a museum. Yeah, super. <laughs> super, great. Uh, by the way, when, when you see Brother Scott after the service, just tell him he started my time too early. Y'all tell him that. And shake your finger at him. All right. But my message today is still in the book of Amos. Uh, and uh, my title today is The Great Restoration. This is the fifth vision uh, that Amos had. This is the fifth vision the day we're going to talk about chapter 9. Now, when I started to, to teach and preach on in Amos, I had no idea that I would ever go, go to the Minor Prophets. To, I've quoted Amos here and there, but I've never ever preached any message from Amos. But I felt really moved by the Holy Spirit to do so. In this message, we will deal with pro, uh, the prophet Amos's fifth vision. We began this, this uh, series uh, with the vision of the locust, the vision of the fire, the vision of the plumb line, and fourthly, the vision of the summer fruit, or the, the vision of the ripe fruit, that fruit that was ready for plucking. And in, the, in these visions, God was speaking to Israel, the northern kingdom. You know, Israel was divided after Solomon into two kingdoms. You remember that. The, no, the northern kingdom, which was ruled by Jeroboam the first, uh, he started it, and then Jeroboam the second, and then a series of, of wicked kings in, in Israel, northern Israel. I mean, I'm sorry, the northern kingdom. And then the southern kingdom was Judah, of course. But uh, the prophet was from Judah. Amos was from Judah. And you, we know that he was a breeder of sheep and uh, a tender of sycamore fruit trees. So, uh, that, so th those, those were a particular fig tree. And that's what he did. God called him from that. Uh, he was, as it were, minding his own business, enjoying his, his uh, sheep breeding and all of that. And God said, look, here, let's go preach, uh, prophesy. 
And uh, that was part of Amos' uh, portfolio in it. He would say, uh, I was not a son of a prophet. It's sort of like saying, I was no preacher's kid. Uh, I was not a part. I didn't go to school. I didn't go to seminary. Sort of like Amos saying that. But God just picked me up and called me. And some of you, I believe God's going to do those things Amen. for you more in the future. You're going to say, well, Lord, well, I can't talk. Well, neither can I. Really, I can't talk without the Lord. I, I, everything is the Lord. When our sister Jadira was reading today, I was thinking about the Word of God. Like you can hear my words right now. Uh, you can't see them. And uh, you, you, if, once they're spoken, you can't identify them. But God, the eternal Word, His thoughts, all of that was expressed in a, in a person. And, uh, and this person, this amazing person, Jesus Christ, is the reality of, the, of God's word. Well, when God called Amos, Amos's words were that of the Son of God, in that when, God, when one speaks for God, he must speak God, if that, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, because the word is God. And so that's what Amos was doing. So we have to be very, very careful how we judge the word of God that's coming from the prophet of God. So we have to be very careful. You're now living in a, a very strange difficult, and difficult time. We've read about it for years. Those of us who are much older, we've read about it, about it for years and years that these days were coming, but they, they've come up on us quickly. And so in, in the book of Amos, it was similar to that, in that Israel was doing very, very well. They were expanding the kingdom. Jeroboam uh, was uh, doing very, very well. He was, he was uh, conquering people. The economy was great. And uh, suddenly God sends a message and says, uh, that ain't all of it. And so let, let's look at uh, Amos 9.1. He says, I saw the Lord as Adonai. I saw the Lord standing by the altar, and he said, Strike the doorposts that the thresholds may shake, and break them on the heads of them all. I will slay the last of them with a sword. Uh, well, this is such an amazing uh, message, but God is speaking of judgment. Now, those of us who have lived a little while, we know that even in the judgment of God, there are good things. Do you know that? I mean, even with COVID-19, it's, it's, it's dealt destruction and, and death. But, man, we have found more effective ways to preach the gospel and to use these tools. We have actually got to know the people in our homes a little bit better. I, I trust that's good for you. And so God is starting this there in, uh, by the, the house of God, by the altar that was supposed to be the house of God. Of course, the northern kingdom polluted it and perverted it worship there. They just start to worship everything along with God. Well, we, we look at that, we say, how terrible. But you know, many churchgoers do the same. And I want to differentiate between churchgoers and Christians. Many churchgoers will do the very same thing. They will just mix everything up with, with their worship of God. Yeah. We have all kinds of, of things that we say and do. And I go, sometimes I'm aghast. I go, whoa. Is that what it is? So this is what they were doing. This is more stark than what we would we do. We just mix it up with our, our bad attitudes. We mix it up with our false bad history and uh, misunderstanding of people and various things. We have various leanings about life, or that is, inclinations about life. And so we mix it, uh, worship with God, with all that stuff, and are not really listening to the Word of God often. So this is what they're doing. And so God's judgment started there where they worshipped. He's where they worshipped. And he says, I will slay the last of them with a sword. Because they were, they were doing wickedly while they were, quote, unquote, worshipping. They were doing wickedly while they were, quote, unquote, worshipping. Wow. And so here he says, God, so God shows the extent of his judgment and his justice. I, I would like to say again, because I don't, I don't want to be a broken record, but at the same time, I want to always say what God gives me to say. Uh, because the words of God will rescue you. And they will rescue you not only from the devil, from the world. They will rescue you from you. And, and thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. So God says to the, through the prophet, he who flees from them shall not get away. So he says, you can flee from, from my 
judgment there uh, at, at your temple because Adonai is standing by the altar where they sacrifice all kinds of things. You know, when we lift our hands, we lift our hands to our own way and our own will. You know, so he says, he who flees shall not, uh, from them shall not get away, and he who escapes from them shall not be delivered. So what God is saying is his judgment is so uh, severe and it's also particular in that God, if, he's, if he means to get you, he's not going to miss you and get somebody else. And so he says, he who escapes uh, from them shall not be delivered. Though, now listen, he's showing the extent. Though they dig into hell, he's talking to Israel, but he's also talking to every person in every generation. So he's talking to us now, especially to us now, especially to us now. We're going through all kinds of things in our world, the, the, the craziness in our world, the craziness in our country, the craziness in the people of God who just take sides and, and do all these things. It's not good. He says, though they dig into hell, from there my hand shall take them. So when God says, if he's targeted you, it's like that little red dot. What do you call it? Infrared? Little red dot in the gun that gets on you. I remember watching those old movies. You ever watch some of those old crazy movies, those old action movies? And I, I used to love these action movies, you know, and I'd have these old crazy dreams. And God, why am I having these dreams? That's the action movies. Okay. That's all of it. I'm, I'm done. But when they put that little red dot on them, on them they could look at it. Uh-uh. It, it's over now. Then the next thing you go, pew, and it was gone. So what God is saying is he, he, he invented infrared. And what God is saying is that once you're targeted for that, the best thing you can do is repent, not explain. Amen. Amen. All right? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Have you ever uh, just thought about yourself sometime before God, and then you, you think that, I I'm here advising God. Have you ever thought about that? You know, come on. If you're a believer in this house and you tell me you've never tried to advise God, I say, you've not even prayed. <laughs> All right. And so here, um, he, God is showing the extent. He says, even though they dig into hell, from there my hand shall take them. Though they climb up to heaven, from there I will bring them down. And though they hide themselves on top of Carmel in the thick brush, you know, where there's a real thicket, he says, though they hide themselves on top of Carmel, from there I will search and take them, though they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea. God is not saying that they can hide from his sight. What he, he, the prophet is using what we call hyperbolic language. He's exaggerating the speech to show you, to try to give you a picture of it. So if you were to go down into the murky waters of the sea and get down on the bottom, you'd think, boy, surely I'm okay. I got away. And he's saying, so he said, though they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, from there I will command the serpent, <laughs> and it shall bite them. Though they go into captivity before their enemies, from there I will command the sword, and it shall slay them. I will set my eyes on them for harm and not for good. Now, you know, this is strong language. It is true language. It is not inaccurate language, but this language doesn't tell the whole story. Remember my title, right? My title is The Great Restoration. I wanted you to be encouraged before you got sad. <laughs> what he is saying is no one will escape the justice of God, not even in hell. I, I've heard people say things like, um, well, I'll just kill myself. What? That means your trauma is only beginning. Don't do that. And if anybody under the sound of my voice is, felt, or is feeling like that, don't do that. You haven't ended your trouble. The best way to end your trouble is to say, God, I give up. You know, help me, Jesus. Amen. So not even in hell will anybody uh, uh, escape. In this description of Adonai, this is a proper name for God, Adonai. Um, uh, it, it, they will not escape his justice. But God is a God of justice. God is a God of righteousness. He is a God of righteousness. He proves that he is God alone. In this great description, he proves that he is God alone because some of those deities that Israel uh, uh, was worshiping along with uh, Adonai, with God, uh, Yehovah, Yehovah, or 
or uh, Yahweh, how, whatever name you use, the, they were worshiping other, other deities with him. And so the description is where those deities were supposed to reside. One is in the sea, one is in the sky. They are all these different places. And so God, God is saying, if you go to find solace in your deity, I'm going to grab, grab you out of out of his palace, wherever he is. What, so he's showing us how there is nothing that is formidable against him, that everything is impotent before him. All such places of so-called security. So this is what he's saying to Israel, and thus he is saying that to us. What he is saying to us is that don't mix all the stuff that we do in our daily lives with our worship of God, of Jesus Christ, of Jehovah, of Yahweh. Do not, work, do not mix those things. You know, uh, so much pollution is coming to the visible church. You know that. I talk about it a lot of times. I talk about it maybe every week. <laughs> but so much craziness is coming to the visible church. Um, you know, you can preach the gospel right out of the word of God. Quoting the words of God, people say, mm, I disagree. That's his opinion. Ayúdanos. Help us, God. Now listen to verse 5. The Lord of hosts, he who touches the earth and it melts. You know, this, is, this is strong language. But he, he's, the prophet is giving us a picture of God. What Israel had done, they had rejected God. They had rejected the chastening of God. It's, for example, it's like if you have a bad child, and I'm sure that none of you has ever had a bad child. But if you had a bad child and you gave him a good spanking, pow, pow, pow. Pow, 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 pow. That's a lot of best makings. And you give them those, and, and then they, do, they don't do anything. So you decide, hmm, what am I going to do? I, don't want, I can't kill my child. <laughs> what do I do? I'll, I'll punish them. Spanking's not enough. I'll send them to bed without dinner. You know, I, I tried that one time. Uh, I'll tell you their story sometime. But I'll send them to bed without dinner, and there you find that somehow they, 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 they uh, got food into the room. You know, nothing seems to work. That's how Israel was. You know, in my case, one of the children, so I saw them sneaking food. And where it was, it, they, they were doing, I was sitting in the den, and the den was oh, to my left. It, as it, and so they, they were sneaking food like this, looking at me. I said, oh, sneaking food to the, to the perpetrator. I won't say anything. I'll just pretend to ignore because I'll have to bring that one into judgment also. <laughs> but this is what God does. He says, he who touches the earth and it melts. He's showing you the, the awesome power of God. And all who dwell there mourn. This is what he's saying. So even the righteous will suffer. Believers, we ought to embrace the righteousness and the justice of God. As I said to you in Spanish, it's, it's uh, la justicia. La justicia de Dios. It's the justice of God, which means it's the righteousness of God. So righteousness and justice cannot be dissected. They're the same. If you're righteous, you're a person of justice. And it's not your own definition. Have you ever talked to people who say, well, uh, that doesn't mean that to me. Have you ever talked to somebody like that? Well, love to me means, it's not love to me. It's not just so subjective. You know, you, there's some room for that when you apply it to yourself, but you can't apply your subjectivity onto somebody else. That is, it's been filtered through your feelings and your own privatization of what love is, or your own privatization of what justice is. No, justice is defined by God Almighty, and it is doing what is just, what is righteous, what is holy before Him. Amen. Amen. And he says, so God's justice is going to be uh, like um, the swell it's going to, and, and of, all of it shall swell like the river, like e the river of Egypt, and subside like the river of Egypt. He who builds his layers in the sky and has founded his strata in the earth, who calls the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. And what he's saying is that is the judgment is going to be like a big flood 
and you just see it just heaping up. And then when it comes back down, just a few people maybe are surviving. And this is what God is saying. What God is saying is that the bulk of the, of the nation will be destroyed, but there will be a few left. He's giving us a picture that there's, there's going to be a remnant left. And I figure, God, if you're, going to ju if you're judging all of us, uh, would you leave me? You know, let, let me, not, not just so that I can live, but let me live to declare your glory and your works. And so Israel had boasted of their special place. And you know what? I, I'm very, I honor Israel. I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of those guys who I'm pro-Israel, but I'm not pro-unrighteousness. You see, when they do wrong, I have to say, I don't say it's right. When you're my, you're my friend, I'm going to back you up. But I'm not going to tell you you're right when you're wrong. You know, if you're looking for me to, to somehow pacify you when you're wrong, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, hey, man, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're not, you're not, should not have done it. But I'm with you. Amen. I'm with you to help you. You know, but I'm not going to, going to side with you when you're wrong. And so I, I'm very much uh, uh, pro-Israel, but I'm not with them when they're wrong. See, years ago, back over almost 800 B.C., they were talking about being God's special people, so how can judgment come to them? Are oh, you still with me? Yeah. And so they were, but they were wrong. They were wrong-headed, wrong-hearted, wrong-minded. And, and today we feed into that as the Christian community. We figure well, we got to be with them even if, no matter what they do, no matter what. They, I heard one man of God say, well, no matter what they do, right or wrong, I'm with them. I go, yeah, but when they're wrong, be with them for the truth. Yeah. Yeah. This is not an anti-Israeli sermon. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm told so much for them. Love, love the Israel, Israeli people. I uh, love the J Jewish people because our, our faith in God has come through them. And uh, Jesus was born a Jew. Amen. Yes, he was, he, was a, he was Jewish from his birth. But now he is the first fruits of a new mankind. Amen. All right. So in verse 7 here, they were... Uh, boasting in the fact God, God's not going to do it. I'm, I'm, I belong to God. He's not going to do anything. I belong to God. And this is what he said. Are you not like the people of Ethiopia to me? O children of Israel, says the Lord, did I not bring up, come on, I brought you out of Egypt. Did I not bring up Israel from the land of Egypt? Yeah. But I brought the Philistines, he's saying, from Kaphel and the Syrians from Kir. I, I've been delivering Gentiles and, and blessing Gentiles too. So don't, don't do this wrong stuff and expect to get by. He says here, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. Now notice, now we, we had this language earlier that says, Hey, everybody's going to be, be messed up. Well, everybody's judged. Everybody is judged. But he says, I am not going to utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. He doesn't say the house of Israel, but he uses the term Jacob because Jacob was that conniver, that guy who, who uh, even in the womb, coming out of the womb, man, grabbed his brother's heel and said, come back, Esau. But he couldn't do it. Or Esau popped out. Right? But he, he was trying to supplant Esau from the womb. And then he, he, he uh, how did he do it? He, he, he uh, stole his birthright and uh, got the blessing by conniving. So he's talking to them. He calls them Jacob because he's saying, you're not all, all right. Amen. I'm not going to destroy you. I could destroy you. I have a right to destroy you in your wrong. Many believers are always on the wrong side of this. You're on the wrong side of God, Amen. as it were. You know, that you and I don't consult God. What do you think, Lord? What do you want me to do, Lord? You know, you'd rather God cry than you. You know, I, 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 I'm not like that. I'm not boasting. I don't want, I'm not saying I'm the template. I'm not boasting in myself. I'm just saying that I have an appointment with God usually about 2 or 3 in the morning when I do something I shouldn't do. <laughs> it's like the back room. Go into the back room, son. I'll be there after a while. Please don't make me wait too long. All right? So, so as a believer, we need to seek the Lord and do what the Lord says, not what our friends and neighbors are saying. Amen. All right? Verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For surely I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations as grain is sifted in a sieve, yet not the smallest grain shall fall to the ground 
All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword who say the calamity shall not overtake you nor confront us. So all of them shall. So God says, I'm going to put you in a, in a sifter. Uh, you, many of you are so young, you probably don't, don't know what a sifter is. You ever had your mom have a, this sifter in the house? She put the flour in it. My mom always sifted her flour, you know. And, and what did she do? She sifted the flour so that the lump, the little anything that was extraneous, like a little bit of rock or little lumps of hard uh, flour, would not get into her whatever she was cooking, her cake or, or whatever. Uh, but she, so God is saying to Israel, I'm going to sift you. I'm going to, and, and what happens only, only, uh, uh, in this case, I, I believe that what God is saying is I'm going to keep all of, of the negative stuff separate from you. Amen. All right? I'm going to keep it separate from you. And so then bad times during times of judgment, good things are happening. Amen. Let me hurry. So um, on, on verse 11, uh, this is the title is Israel will be restored. So we can say that that Christians, we believers, will be also restored. We can say that. We will be restored. So God's judgment also includes salvation. Jo God's judgment. So don't always be so terrified. Ah, ah, you know how we are. You know, you know you, you, we, we mess up, and then we mess up. We think that we can keep going to God. Well, I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry. Well, this is just me, God. Come on, man. You know, let's get this thing right because we don't live the Christian life by our own strength, by our own power. We live the Christian life by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the life of Jesus Christ in us. And so now, uh, the, verse 11, uh, let's read it. It says, on that day, uh, that is the day when I do all of these things, I will raise up the tabernacle of David which has fallen down and repair its damages. That means I'm going to wall up its breaches, all of the holes and the cracks in the wall. I'm going to, I'm going to repair it. Uh, and he says, I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. Now he's saying this to Amos. I will rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom or that they may possess uh, the remnant of mankind. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Now, now this is what he says. So, so, so he says, I'm going to rebuild the tabernacle. I'm going to raise it up again, the tabernacle of David. You know, I've described to you the tabernacle of David, right? It was when uh, uh, David was now king. Uh, he was the first righteous king of, of Israel. And he was like the, the prototype king always sought God, loved God with all of his heart. And David, when he got brought the Ark of the Covenant um, uh, from, I think, Obed-Edom's house, I, I believe it was Obed-Edom's house, he brought the Ark of the Covenant there. And he brought it, uh, and he put it in, in a belt of tent and put it in a tent. Well, you know, in the tabernacle, it was compartmentalized. The Ark was behind the, this curtain. And in the temple, it was also behind the curtain. But uh, in David's tabernacle, it was just right out in the open. David could walk right in there, right into the presence of God. And uh, he would worship in the presence of God. So God's going to restore this tabernacle of David uh, and, uh, that has been torn down. He's going to restore it. So in order to restore it, there must be something that the Israel, Israelis or Israelites aren't seeing here. They are thinking that we're just, we've got it all. We're God's special people. But right there he says, no, no, I'm going to include Gentiles with you guys. Amen. I, I'm going to include Gentiles. Yeah, I brought you out of Egypt. I did these things for you. But I'm going to include Gentiles. This is amazing. I'm so glad he includes Gentiles. And so, and so he says, okay, now, and then he, he describes this blessing. We'll talk perhaps a little bit more about uh, the tabernacle. But he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman, this is how bountiful the blessings are going to be uh, in, in respect to how devastating the destruction was. I mean, you know, to, you saw somebody going into hell, you're going in there and getting them. Somebody going up into heaven, one of, they think uh, in the heavens were one of their gods. And you go in there and get them, pull them out. You know, they go to the bottom of the sea, they think, I can just rest here. And then God says, get them. And a serpent bites you. He says, wait a minute, but, but now as devastating as, the, uh, as, as that judgment was right now, look, look at the blessings, the bountifulness of the blessings. The days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. 
I mean, you got such a bountiful harvest that, that you're still gathering it. And the promise said, come on, hurry. I've got to plant. It's planting time. You go, but give me a little bit more time. He said, hurry up. Get the, and so, so God is talking about a, a time of plenty like, like they had never had. And the trader of grapes, uh, him who sows seed. So the time is coming uh, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. So God is showing you a time when uh, he is rebuilding uh, the, the tabernacle of David. And let me just say it in case I don't get to it. He does that through a son of David. He does that through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who has brought in Gentiles and Jews into one body. That's what Jesus has done. Amen. In Acts chapter 15, it's a very wonderful chapter. You want to read that, Acts chapter 15. It's when the Gentiles were coming in, and uh, James, who was the brother of the Lord, was now, he was not a believer until Jesus' resurrection. And then he, he, did, he, he just gave everything to God. Um, and, and James was now the head of the Jerusalem church. He was the one who presided over it. He so came to the Lord. As a matter of fact, I think it was uh, Josephus who says that he, his knees, he stayed on his knees. His knees became deformed. Uh, and I think he had the nickname Camel Knees. Uh, listen at, at, at the reading of Acts 15, beginning in 13. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree. So he's saying what God did through Peter at Cornelius' house, the word of God agrees. So if the word of God is not agreeing what you and I are doing, then we need to stop it. And that's what Israel did not do. Does the word of God agree? And don't twist the word of God. That means you're going to be guilty of double punishment. Wow. Now listen. And with this, the words of the prophet agree, as, just as it is written. After this, he's, he's uh, quoting Amos. After this, I will return and rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up. Listen. So that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does these things. And known to God from eternity are all his works. And so what God is saying is, I have planned to save a multitude of, of Gentiles. And so what, what uh, the scriptures are saying here, um, uh, uh, Amos, the scripture here in Amos and, of course, in Acts are saying is that God, God will bring in a people just like you who are not like you, he's going to bring them in too. I believe this is a perfect day for God to show uh, the pious Christians now who have really gotten a lot of things wrong. Amen. A lot of things wrong. I, I told you, uh, I've told you a number of times that were I not a Christian already, were I not, it would be hard for me to, to become a Christian seeing what I see and hearing what I hear from so-called Christians. Amen. I'm just telling you straight up. But I'm glad I'm saved. So we ought to remove the obstacle. And I believe that God is saying, even in this, in, in this day, I'm going to remove the obstacles to people seeking the Lord. I'm going to remove obstacles so that the rest of gen the Gentiles can come to me. I believe that's going on. Okay. Let me go back to Amos 9, verse 14. I'm going to wrap it up. He says, I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. So there are going to be some. Remember when the, when the, the, the river swells and drowns, and then there are going to be a few that, that are left when it, it subsides, and they're just going to come out all messed up, you know, like, like, like uh, uh, Jonah after, after the, the big fish swallowed him. They're going to come out. They're going to look like death warmed over, and they're going to be ready to do what's right. Now listen to what he says. They shall... I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled up. The land I have given them, says the Lord God. This is so big, isn't it? So powerful. So he says, I'm going to do something. And so this is what we believe, is that Israel yet has a function. Yes, they will, but not what we hear 
always on our news and from the prime minister. Did I go there? Oh, I, I went there. Not always those things. You are the one. You are the ones who have the truth of God. Don't let somebody who does not have Jesus tell you what the truth is. Amen. All right. All right. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me hurry. Isaiah 2, verses 2 through 4, gonna, and this is my last verse, verses. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. We're part of that, folks. It's not just Israel, it's Israel and us, but those remnants of Israel. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations, all people groups, shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Lord, I ask you to make us aware, make us cognizant of what you are doing right in the midst of us. Let us not be like ancient Israel, the northern kingdom, who did not yield, did not repent at your rebuke. But Lord God, I pray that we would repent at your rebuke and not become an advisor or a counselor to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. The battle is the Lord's, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm not going to fear during these turbulent times. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Remember that, that verse, that little beautiful song, I will trust in the Lord until I die. And that's what God is saying to us. But he wants us to know the truth. You and I, Paul says, that we are the pillar 
and ground of the truth. So what we are the mainstay of the truth. But Paul says that, that the body of Christ is the place where truth dwells. Now Paul also tells us in Romans that, that uh, the name of the Lord had been blasphemed because the, the, the people who were God carriers, who, who had the word and knowledge of God, were not living right. And so what we want to do in this day, we want to be ready for every eventuality. And that's why I preach these things. Actually, I don't ever decide what I'm going to preach. You may not know that. I don't. There have been times I, I would say, God, I, I don't, you haven't said anything to me. You know, so uh, I'm going to have to call somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever he gives me, that's what I try to share with you. And then I, I go before him and try to give you exactly what he says and what he wants. I want to say that if there are some of us here today who maybe may find ourselves so, sort of leaning away from these things, I want you to just rebuke yourself if that's necessary. Uh, just rebuke yourself and hear the word of the Lord. When the word of God comes and, and someone, myself or, or, or somebody else, they are preaching the word of God, don't you sit in the pew and say, yeah, but that's a sign that you're not with God. That's a, not, a sign that you're not with God. Now, if somebody's giving their, their opinion, that's one thing. But we don't want to, to have opinion time here. We want to say what God is saying, and to the very best of our understanding, then, then interpret that to you. We live in the, messianic, the uh, messianic era. This is the messianic era that we're living in when Jesus is restoring. This has been about a 2,000 year uh, restoration uh, project, but he is still restoring uh, the tabernacle of David so that all of mankind will be able to seek the Lord. Uh, does that excite you? Uh, I mean, excite, it excites me. It really it excites me. I, I'm so excited about Jesus and, and what he has done uh, for us. I want to say that um, that if you have heard this message today and it, and it pricked your heart and you say, well, I want to give myself to Jesus even more so. Maybe you would say, I want to give myself to Jesus for the first time. I'd like to see a hand if that's you. Um, either way, either way. Yeah, thank you. Either way, either way. Let me say to you as I close here, whenever I was a young man in the Lord, whenever I had an opportunity it was given by the man of God to say, does anybody want to grow more in the Lord? I go, I do. You know, I was like that. And and in those days, you know, we didn't have COVID-19. And we'd come to the front and we'd all just clam up there. You know, a little church I grew up in was smaller than one section here. And uh, we'd clam up there. I said, I want more of God, more of God. And I was praying last night, thinking about that. Wanting more of God, wanting more of God wanting more of God and that's what I want for you to want more of God all right and grow in the Lord and recognize what God has done for you and, and knowing that you're a part of a great end time move amen amen well for those in our audience those of you who don't know Jesus you can know him today by repenting you can't you can't just say, well, I, I'm going I'm to check him out and try it for a while. No, you have to repent. You can't check him out because you're going in the opposite direction. So you have to turn around. You say, God, I'm going in the wrong direction. You turn around and you say, God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And when you do that, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. And then he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is what God will do for you, and you can be saved right where you are. Amen. Uh, I'm going to give the, the, the blessing, but afterwards, uh, we, and then after I give the blessings, uh, we're going to say goodbye to everybody on our uh, online uh, room, or however you call that platform. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to you, and we'll see you uh, in a couple of hours uh, at 1030. We'll see you at 1030, uh, Corpus Christi time. All right? So let us bless the Lord, and we're going to remain here for a moment. Repeat after me, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord 
lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you his peace in Jesus name I bless you amen go with God all right everybody don't y'all go with God you stay with me right here